In this video, you will learn the 10 most important rules for escaping low rating. And let's be honest, PvP is super frustrating these days. Remember when knowing that you could death CC made you a good priest? These days, you need to be 100% dialed in even at lower ratings. And there's another problem. Rank 1 streamers don't even know how good the average player actually is. They'll give obvious advice like press CDs or don't get juked without realizing that 90% of players already know these things. Rarely will they tell you some of the actual mechanics that really work in PvP. Take interrupting for instance. These days, it's actually bad to kick fast. Players are so good at juking that trying to be fast will probably donate a precog for free, making you look like a noob. The best players like Chanimal do what is called late kicking, which means using your interrupt super late into the cast. This is broken for several reasons. Number one, people are significantly less likely to juke at the very end of their cast anyway. And number two, by kicking late, you make your opponent waste time by fake casting over and over. Late kicking is just one of the hundreds of mechanics you can learn at skillcap.com, where we focus on teaching what can actually increase your rating. We've got hundreds of videos, including class courses, role tips, positioning guides, and a brand new course that teaches you how to counter every class in the game. We focus on teaching WoW from your perspective, with our ultimate goal of making sure you improve. And that's why we offer a 400 rating gain guarantee. If you don't rank up, you don't pay. It's as simple as that. To get access to hundreds of exclusive guides, be sure to click that discount link below. Alright, back to the video. For every rule to make sense, you need to understand one concept. It's that solo shuffle is like a big game of tug of war, and in order to win, you need to control tempo. But no matter what team you're on, you are the consistent factor in all of your games. So even if your lobby is full of questionable players, you can still have an impact. Let's get started with our number one rule, which is to do all of the arena side quests. We want you to imagine there is an NPC standing in the starting room with quests that reward a million gold each. One of these important quests will have you kill important minions like Psyfiend, Totems, Observer, and more. If you ever wondered why every caster wants to play with Waz, it's not just because he has godlike control, it's because he routinely takes the time to kill Grounding Totem for his team. Tiny plays like this can have a huge impact on the game, especially considering that there are tons of abilities that can get absolutely countered by a simple grounding totem. Imagine the pain of a Disc Priest sending every bolt of ultimate penitence into a totem that has 5 HP. One huge problem at lower ratings is that players have no idea how important these side quests can be. Just watch this team completely ignore Psyfiend as it stays up for its entire 12 second duration, making damage literally twice as hard to deal with for the healer, when all it takes is one second to snipe down for most DPS. If you watch high rated gameplay, it's like they have an aim bot activated whenever Psyfiend pops up, and they are instantly ready to snipe it down. Remember, if there's one takeaway from this video, it's that tempo is key, and you can do a bunch of small and easy things to help control it in both directions. For instance, Healing Tide is another side quest that rank 1 players will hunt down like Illidan chasing a demon. This single ability can do over 8 million healing if it isn't killed. It doesn't take a PhD to understand that the value of taking 2 seconds to kill Healing Tide quickly is going to be much higher than any damage you could deal during that window. And that's what we call value. There are a bunch of side quests that you can do in Arena, whether it's rooting BM Hunter pets or sniping down an Observer, there is value you can easily extract in every Arena. It's like that age old lesson in life, if it doesn't take much time, do it. Alright, and now for the second rule of low MMR, take control of the early game no matter what. If you were to go back in time and show players from 2011 what modern solo shuffle looks like, they would probably lose their minds. That's because at the highest ratings, both teams are playing like complete animals, popping every cooldown in the game. But despite the fact that this looks incredibly stupid, there is a simple explanation. What you do in the early game will set the tone for the rest of the round. One thing we notice at lower ratings is that people play scared. Sometimes teams won't even engage for nearly 30 seconds once the gates open, and once the fight starts, players hold on to their cooldowns, maybe because they are trying to be smart by saving them for later, but without knowing they are actually screwing themselves over later on. To fix this, there's a simple checklist you should follow in every opener. Within 15 seconds of the game starting, your team should have already stunned the kill target, CC'd the healer, popped offensive cooldowns, traded at least one defensive cooldown, and your healers should have already pressed one of their healing CDs. We will come back to these last two in just a second. We know it sounds like a brain dead strategy, but if you aren't popping your offensives within a few seconds of combat starting, you are hurting yourself later on. This is because solo shuffle is designed to end somewhere between 2 and 3 minutes. 
This means if you use your offensives within 30 seconds of the game starting, you will have them ready to close out the game two minutes later. Every feral druid should be pressing their incarnation in the opener no matter what. Sometimes it will outright win the game if the enemy team doesn't react. And even if the game goes on beyond two minutes, remember that at this stage of the game, no healer on this earth will be able to keep their team alive for much longer. This is also why healers need to be using at least one of their healing cooldowns during the initial clash, because just like DPS, you need to be playing around the vital two minute mark. Unfortunately, this druid waits over a minute into the game before using their first tree form. If this game goes on to deep dampening, he will be completely screwed. Meanwhile, if you tune into any high rated healer, they are popping at least one of their cooldowns within seconds, even if it seems like overkill. That way, everything stays lined up for later on when you cannot possibly heal without CDs. Our next rule might sound stupid at first, but it's to avoid picking one target. You know by now that choosing a target in the starting room is always better than everyone being silent. Having everyone on the same plan in the opener is going to be a key part of controlling tempo early on. But there's a tendency for players to simply tunnel vision one target all game, even when there are clearly better options in the mid to late game. Just look here as this Ret Paladin will try and train this hunter. Through Survival of the Fittest, Blessing of Protection, and Roar of Sacrifice, barely putting a dent in their HP, when they could just tab to the nearby healer instead. Remember that above anything else, damage is king. One of the quickest and easiest ways to carry the momentum of your damage is to swap on defensive cooldowns. This is super easy to do and is instantly rewarding because it means doing more damage. Watch here as Zipai instantly swaps after the Shadow Priest presses Dispersion. Why? Because there's absolutely no reason to tunnel through a massive shield wall. But notice how the moment Dispersion ends, he is instantly ready to swap back, suffering zero damage loss and allowing him to carry momentum. Instead of picking one target in the starting room, think about the broader picture. Pick one target you want to kill initially, and then think about all of the defensives that might slow your damage down, signaling to you when it's time to make a swap. And keep in mind that the best kill target can change at any time, especially in deep dampening. In the late game, any player can become the kill target. During this crucial time, you want to be maximizing damage output while minimizing damage input, which is what we can see Big Mechs do here, as he simply hits whoever he can as dampening creeps up to 70%. It literally does not matter what target was called in the opener. The late game is the Wild West. Because at this stage of the game, it doesn't matter if you're Sidu, Meh, or Scenarius himself, nobody can out heal damage in deep dampening. Now for all of you melee out there, we know that uptime is an issue. These days, it seems impossible to even have a kill target to begin with when you're slowed and knocked for 90% of the game. Luckily, there is one simple strategy you can use to help deal with this problem. It's called hitting the nearest wizard. Instead of chasing the kill target around the map all game getting kited endlessly, just attack whoever is closest at all times, swapping around as you avoid as much damage as you can with LOS. Look, it's not going to be pretty either way, but this exact strategy is used at the highest ratings by the best melee in the game. Joe Fernandez might be raging as he's waddling his character around trying to hit the nearest wizard, but imagine his rage if he didn't. It's a joke! But now we have a question. What is the worst part of dying in round one of your lobby? No, it's not because you're now immediately behind on wins. It's because if you die in round one, there is a 90% chance you will be the kill target in the next five lobbies in a row. Our next rule is designed to prevent that from happening. It's to trade smaller defensives high on HP. There are only two types of defensives in WoW, small efficient CDs and big oh buttons. Chances are your class has both. Those smaller CDs, you need to treat those like a rotational ability. If you have a defensive with a cooldown of one minute or less, there's absolutely no reason to ever try and greet it. The problem we see over and over at lower ratings is players waiting until they drop low before using a defensive. Just look at this warlock here who waits until they drop to 25% before using their dark pact. This is bad for two reasons. Number one, if you are DPS and you overcommit to using your small defensives, it means there is a high chance your healer will overcommit by using their oh button. The goal is to slow down damage while you are high to avoid falling low in the first place. It's not just offensives you need to pop in the opener, but smaller efficient defensives too. Just look here as Gelu pops his Dark Pact immediately when he gets stunned by the warrior. He does this because he knows that there is no reason to be greedy with small defensives. The most foolproof way of trading CDs is to trade one to one. Look here as the Boomkin will incarn and Zipai will immediately astral shift. It doesn't matter that he's high on HP or whether his healer is in CC. Trading high always works. While we're on topic, when it comes to staying alive, we have another super important rule. Play for your two minute CDs. 
Let's remember that Solo Shuffle is a two minute bracket. Blizzard intentionally designed dampening so that games rarely go past three minutes. And at the two minute mark of every round, dampening will be ramping super fast. If you can manage to survive until then, you are basically at the finish line. That's because if you manage to follow rule number three of controlling the early game, then around two minutes later, your big offensive cooldown will be ready once again, ready for you to tap into their power and win the game. But of course, you can't use your offensives when you're dead on the floor. Which means, in the crucial moments leading up to the two minute mark, you need to be avoiding as much damage as possible. That's exactly what Big Mechs will do here, avoiding damage and even micro CCing the Ret Paladin as he waits for his coordinated assault to be ready. This will help him buy just enough time to be able to reach his biggest CD and win the game. And if you're ever in your cooldown window and are ready to finish off the game, this is the crucial time where you absolutely should not be greedy with your defensives. Virtually every Feral Druid at high ratings will try and pair either Barkskin or Survival Instincts with their second Incarn. By having a major defensive active during your CDs will ensure that you stay in the fight and can maximize damage. The last thing you want is to be on the cusp of winning the game and then being forced to kite away during your offensive CDs. Our next rule is going to sound obvious, but it's something that almost every player does at some point. Do not ruin your partner's win condition. You know that half of Solo Shuffle is just a mental game, and we've all had the experience of having a kill completely ruined because our partner did something unbelievably stupid. Whether it was a paladin blinding off our dots for no reason, or someone completely resetting DRs on a stun, fear, poly, you name it, for absolutely zero reason. These are the types of misplays that make you want to uninstall. And it goes without saying that you should avoid this mistake yourself. So how can we make sure this never happens? Step one is to have a basic understanding of your partner's playstyle. You can count on some classes doing the same thing every game no matter what. You know every hunter should be stun trapping the healer every 30 seconds. And you should know that every Affliction Warlock, Shadow Priest, or Ellie Shaman will want to keep everyone in the arena dotted. You don't have to have an encyclopedia of game knowledge here, but just a basic understanding of how your partner uses damage and CC. Step two is to be a little careful when it comes to using CC or any ability that removes dots. You should already be in the habit of checking your own DRs, and unless you have a really good reason to, avoid using quarter duration CC if DRs are about to reset. And then you should take the additional step of playing around your partner's DRs. If you have a rogue on your team, the number one mistake you need to avoid is putting the kill target on stun DR right before they want a shadow dance or kidney shot. More often than not, this will completely ruin the kill and more importantly, will make you the target of some toxic messages. Moving on, if there is one thing most players overlook, it's their positioning. But if there's just one positioning rule you should follow, it's to never stack on your healer. Now, we have entire courses on our website dedicated to the nuances of positioning for every role, but for now, we can keep things simple. It isn't a conspiracy to say that WoW PvP is basically Mythic Plus. Every spec has huge AoE damage and tons of ways to stop casts. What do both of these have in common? They're both going to make you lose the solo shuffle tug of war. If you stack on top of your healer like this player is doing here, it means you're exposing them to AoE damage and making it really convenient for the enemy team to land CC. You can probably think of one reason why standing on your healer might be a good thing, but there are 99 bad reasons that say otherwise. If you instinctively run towards your healer, recognize it instantly, and then try to create some distance in any way you can. This allows you to passively abuse one of the most underrated mechanics in WoW, spacing. Spacing refers to the distance you keep in between your character, your teammates, and the enemy team. As a caster, the ideal scenario is to keep what is called triangle positioning, where you are maximum distance from both of your teammates. What this does is make it very annoying for enemy melee to bounce between targets. If that warrior wants to fear your healer, they have to leap all the way across the map, and then burn another gap closer to get back on target, which means you can gain a positioning advantage. Now for all of you melee out there, keeping distance from your healer is always going to help, but just be careful not to line of sight, since it goes without saying that this is one of the easiest traps to fall into. Just watch here as Chanimal baits this warrior out of line, which nearly converts into a kill, all because they were out of LOS for a few seconds. Next up we have a rule for all the healers out there, do not try to conserve mana. As a healer, you have three natural predators, big damage, endless CC chains, and of course, dampening. Sometimes there's even one more, your teammates. Anyway, it's super rare that games last more than three minutes. The main culprit of long games is usually having a bunch of wizards in the same lobby on a very large map. In these situations, sure, mana might matter. But in 99% of games, you should not care about conserving mana at all. And instead, your goal should be to spend every second of the game pressing an ability. 
The goal is to minimize what we call dead globals. Think of it this way. Every 10 seconds, you can use around 10 globals. Spend one second doing nothing, and that's 10% less efficiency. Spend five seconds doing nothing, and you're down 50%. These dead globals quickly add up over time. If you play a weak healer or a healer with a lot of maintenance, you should not care whatsoever about your mana bar. Resto Druids have some of the worst passive mana regeneration in the game and don't even play Innervate most of the time. And just look at how the highest rated druid in the world is literally spamming globals all game. Trust us when we say that failing to maximize globals is a huge issue. Instead of thinking only about healing, you need to think about pre-healing. It's not just Resto Druids that need to pre-heal. Every healer in the game has some type of maintenance, whether it be Earth Shield, Wheel and Woe stacks, Reversion, you name it. If there's a buff worth keeping up, you should refresh it even before it's expired. If you play healer, chances are you hate playing against hunters. You get stunned, into trap, into silence, and if there is any other CC left for you, it's almost a guaranteed GG. But the trick to beating hunters in any other classes with these long annoying CC chains is to literally never stop healing. Refresh those hots and try and keep your teammates topped at all times. Your team is going to be more confident and play much better if they're topped off, which means you should never ever think about mana. Our next rule applies to everyone and is guaranteed to increase your win rate. Obey the 80% rule. The 80% rule means you want to make plays that have an 80% chance or higher of producing a good outcome. In other words, avoid taking stupid risks. A lot of low-rated players think that they need to win the games by themselves, like this Resto Druid here, who after taking a stun will stand in the enemy team's face to land a Cyclone on the Priest, who is already on DR. Now, this was an obvious risk not worth taking, but what is less obvious is why taking a 50-50 or 60-40 is bad. There is a tendency for both DPS and healers to try and force wins even when there is a very high chance to be punished, which can turn a winning gamble into a losing gamble instantly. Despite the fact that high-rated players might appear to play insanely aggressive, more often than not, they are playing risk-averse most of the game. Just watch here as Aegis waits until his Shadow Priest lands a double fear before pushing in for a polymorph, because right now there is a high chance he can play without being punished. But then once the CC lands, he immediately goes back to playing safe. Finally, we have a rule that will make PvP a better place for everyone. Do not tilt to your teammates. There is a 0% chance anyone you flame will feel motivated to play better by hearing some backhanded remark, and chances are they will only play worse. It's well known that stress negatively affects decision making. If your goal is to gain rating, you should be self-interested, and the most selfish thing you can do is make sure you win every game. So if you make your teammates worse, it will eventually get in the way of your goals of gaining rating. Vinruki had a brilliant workaround to this on stream. Whenever he feels like flaming his partners, he will type out a message and then instantly delete it, giving him the satisfaction of being a little bit cheeky without the negative effects. And remember, if you truly want to learn how to solo carry by yourself, there's nothing better than our brand new course on how to instantly gain rating, where you will save hours of trial and error learning how to beat every spec in WoW. Pair that with our updated class courses and hundreds of arena commentaries, and you will have everything you will ever need to rank up this season. It doesn't stop there, as skill cap members also get exclusive add-on profiles, which we spend hundreds of hours fine-tuning, which now even includes PvE support, where you can instantly change your entire UI to be optimized for raids in Mythic Plus with the click of a button. You can try all this out completely risk-free, since if you don't rank up while actively using skill capped, you get your money back, no questions asked. You can unlock all this through the discount you can only get from the link below. So, what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted. And that will do it for this one. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time.